There are three things this morning, if nothing else, we will be able to learn. If nothing else, we'll know the setting of chapter 20. One of the reasons I have you get your Bible out is you notice that the way the English Bible is broken up, at the top of chapter 20, it says what? It says the parables of the workers and the vineyard or something like that, which seems to indicate chapter 20 starts a brand new thought. But the reality is chapter 20 is in response to that question Peter asks in verse 27. We've left everything for you. What is in it for us? Which is actually Peter's response to overhearing another sermon. Because prior to Peter's question is that story that you probably know or are familiar with. And if not, let me tell you what it was. A rich young man came to Jesus, believing him to be a rabbi, and said, I have done everything the Old Testament asks of me. What must I do for your kingdom? And Jesus said, get rid of everything you have. And the young man said, well, I've got to go bury my dad first. And he walked away. And Peter says, Lord, we've done that. We've left houses. You called us from our jobs. We left the nets with the fish sitting on the side of the boat. And we followed you. What do we get out of it? See, that's the setting for this parable. The parable is answering the question, what do I get out of the kingdom? So if nothing else, you now know the setting of the story. If nothing else, we get to hear the story. We get to hear the parable. Jessica read it so well for us. We get to hear the story of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Now, this is a farm community. Let's walk through that story yet. We're not back, back, back. We don't want that quote yet. Let's talk about this story for a second. A farmer begins the day with a job to do. And he goes out and hires the very people that are in this picture. By the way, this is a picture from the last time the economy went bad and it got real bad. Where instead of us worried about whether we're going to lose parts of our salary... We had people who were begging daily for their salary. That's the setting of this story. These are day laborers. The denarius, which is mentioned, is what you would make for working a day's wages. Do you know why you made that for making a day's wages? Because that's what it took to provide for yourself daily. So whoever gets hired at 6 o'clock in the morning is going to get minimum wage. They're going to work a 12-hour day. They're going to work from sun up to sun down on the farm. So, let me ask you good farmers, when you know what the project is today at 6 o'clock in the morning, how many guys are you going to hire the first round out? You're going to hire the guys it takes to get the job done, right? And that's exactly how the story begins. Jesus shows up, the men are gathered together, they've got their gloves, they've got their plaid shirt, they've got their hat, they're ready to go. Instead of getting on the detasseling truck, they're going to follow the farmer back. And he says, I'll tell you what, if you come work for me today, I will pay you a day's wages. And they all agree. Because if they stay around with these other guys, there's not a chance, or there's no guarantee of anybody else coming all day. So these are the lucky ones at 6 o'clock in the morning. They know when they go out in the field, they're going to get everything. And Jesus says a really odd story about this farmer. Three hours later, he goes back out and he gets more. And then three hours later, he goes out and he gets more. And then three hours later, he goes out and he gets more. And finally, at five o'clock, he goes back out one more time and gets more workers. Now, some commentators want to claim that this is harvest. And that's why he has to keep bringing in more guys. How many of you don't know how much it's going to take to get the job you need to do done harvesting during the day? Where you keep going, oops, i got to go back out at 9 and get some more. Oops, guess I got it wrong at 12. Oops, it's 3. We still don't have enough guys. Now let me ask you something. What kind of farmer would you be if that's how you ran your harvest? Because there's plenty of laborers there at the beginning of the day. If you've got the workforce, you'll do it. I asked Dean this question. I said, how many guys do you get for detasseling? Or for not detasseling, you don't do detasseling, you do hay and straw. Both of them are horrible jobs where you get a day's work for, honestly, the sweat of your brow. Some of you enjoyed it. Good for you. Dean goes, well, it's not so a matter of question of how many I get. It's how many I can get. 
My work is limited by the amount of laborers I can get. The guy in the story can have all the guys he wants. We know because he keeps going back and going back and going back. Now it's pay time. And he decides to pay the first guys last and the last guys first. Put yourself in that situation. If you're the last guy, what are you expecting? Well, a denarius is a silver coin, but here's the funny thing. You can break a denarius up into 12 different smaller coins. They had a coin that was only worth a twelfth of a denarius. You could get paid for only an hour's wages. He comes up, and he expects just the hour. I worked an hour, I get an hour. That's the way it works. At least somebody in the house will be able to have a morsel of something this morning. The reality of the story is he gets the big full day check. Now, if you're at the back of the line, you're thinking, I've been here for 12 hours. I can't wait to see what this is going to look like. 12 times that amount. It's a hundred and, that's a 1,200% increase. This guy's going to owe me quite a bit of money. If he's paying that guy $70 for a day's wages, I'm going to make $840 just for doing what I would have settled for $70 for. To the line and says, where's my 70 bucks? Or where's my 840 bucks? And the farmer says, here's your 70. See, this story is not about the laborers. The story is about the landowner. This story is a demonstration of what we've been talking about in Galatians. This is a demonstration of grace. Grace, Garrison Keeler says, now's our quote. It's a concept. Prodigals welcomed, good workers taken for granted. The latecomers get the same pay as the workers who've been there early morning. Go figure. But it's there in the Bible. Let's highlight a part of that phrase Keeler just said, though. Good workers taken for granted. That's the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. The men who were hired in the last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us. Where's what I deserve? Is that unfair? Is that a fair question to ask? Is that a fair question to ask? Does this seem unfair to you? If it is unfair, is it unfair to the 12-hour worker? Because what did the 12-hour worker receive? He received the wages for working 12 hours. He received the agreement of which he agreed to, or as we call that in Galatians, he agreed with, a, he covenanted, he contracted, he had a legal agreement with the farmer. Is grace unfair? Does it not take advantage of the good workers? No. If you come in and say to God, I'm here for exactly what you owe me, guess what you will get from God? Exactly what he owes you. In fact, Paul says that's true of the kingdom. In Thessalonica, when people started selling their goods and sitting up on a mountain waiting for Jesus to come back, and as a result, they became gospers and busybodies and did nothing productive for society, Paul, in 2 Thessalonians 3, wrote these things. We hear that some among you are idle. They're not busy. They're busybodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. Paul says, don't take them food. If they're going to sit out on a hill and Jesus hadn't come back yet and they don't think they have to work today, then they don't eat. Paul says, we should be able to do that which is asked of us. Yeah. You work, you eat. That's a, that's a principle. It's a valid principle. The truth of our story is those who work are going to eat. 